Hello, well, this is part 8 of the milling machine upgrade to CNC using the brushless DC motors and the O-Drive system. Well, I'll show you through the current program and what the program is actually doing. So feel free to take a look at my website as well with the link in the description where I'll keep the program up to date on there. Well, the controller is now in a nice little neat box with twin display and two keypads and also has the emergency stop button. If you like this video, please consider subscribing for the latest updates and give it a thumbs up and I want to say a massive thank you to my patrons for their continued support. Right over to the program. Okay so I'm going to do a quick overview of the Arduino program or sketch where there's a number of main blocks such as the information block, the definition block, setup, the main loop, the function blocks and then the special function blocks such as the interrupt subroutine. So with the information block it's got information such as the GNU General Public License, a little description about what the program does, some notes on things to address so I can look back at it and see what I need to do, and then I like to list all the functions as well so I can print it out and have it as a reference as I'm writing the program. So with the definition block you've got things like include, so you can include other header files and these are Liquid Crystal, O-Drive, Wire, things like that. And these are programs that have been written by other people, so I don't need to rewrite all that code. So I can just include the file at the top, and it'll add it into the uploaded file to the Arduino. So through the define block, you're defining things such as interrupts. So interrupt ES pin is on pin 2, and the state of it as well. So if it goes low, then the emergency stop button has been pressed. Then you've got things like the y-axis variables, x-axis variables, and z-axis variables, but... I've only got the y-axis variables enabled at the moment because that's the only one I've got up and running. Then backlash variables, so if I wanted to change the backlash speed or the backlash amount, uh, I just change it in here rather than going through the program to look for it. Then joystick pin configuration, so whether joystick's plugged in effectively, um, all the analog pins and digital pins, the, the liquid crystal display where that's plugged in, also program flags as well, which kind of defines the program state as it's running through the program. And you've got keypad pin variables as well. So you can track through the keypad to see which button's being pressed. Then various other definitions as well. So effectively I'm setting up all the pins and giving them a name. Next is the setup block. And the setup block sets up the pins. As you can see there, pin mode. And then each pin is either an input, an output, has pull-up resistors enabled and so on. And as you can see it's easier to get the defined name so if I go down to keypad it's keypad Y1, keypad Y2, keypad Y3, Y4, X1, X2, X3 and so on. So I know that that's the keypad rather than putting pin mode 32 input I know that pin mode keypad Y1 is the input. So I've defined it before and now I'm telling it what the pin is. Then further down I've got the O-Drive serial and the PC serial as well. So they're separate serial ports on there. So the PC serial is going through the USB connection and the O-Drive serial port is serial port 1 on the Arduino Mega. So then you start the LCD, print the LCD. So I put the version control on there as well and the latest changes when it first starts up and hello world. Then after that setup block, you've got the main loop. And this loop just goes round and round and round forever unless there's a problem or, or an interrupt's been called, such as the emergency stop button's been pressed. So it comes out of the main loop, runs the interrupt subroutine, and then continues with the loop as soon as the emergency stop button's been released. So the loop is fairly small on this program because the majority of the program is actually in the functions, not in the loop. It certainly is in my case. So I use the loop as, as a sort of a menu control and then it jumps out to all the functions to run the functions individually. So you've got all the functions that are listed at the top underneath the loop. So keypad scan function, keypad press function and so on. Uh, just a quick talk through that. So the keypad scan function to see what it's doing. It sets up Y1, Y2, Y3 and Y4. It sets X1 as low, X2 and X3 as high and then looks for any key presses. 
So if you press Y1, Y2, Y3 or Y4, because it's a matrix, it will pick up which one you've pressed. Then it sets X1 as high and then X2 as low and then scans through Y1, 2, 3 and 4 again. See which button's been pressed. And then it sets X2 high and X3 low and scans through 1, 2, 3 and 4. So it's, so it's gone through all 12 keys very rapidly and can work out what button you pressed. And they've got keypad press function. So this is where it looks at what button was pressed. The switch there is keypad retrieve, so it's looking at the keypad. And then case one, it'll do something, case two, it'll do something, case three, case four, all the way down to case 10 and 11. So it's zero to 11, because there's 12 buttons. Then you've got O drive full calibration function. So it'll go through this at the start and run the full calibration sequence on the O drive system. Draw a circle, that's not actually being used now. Move to position, so I can actually move the table to a set position. Manual soft stop, so I can actually put a stop at either end in the software. And also set the speed backwards and forward, so I can manually machine out using the CNC control. So effectively, one axis CNC. Zero all axis, not run at the moment, but you'll be able to set up a zero position, so you can set the spindle in a certain position and zero that out. So jog mode. So you can jog it by 0.1, 1 or 10 millimeters. Although move to is more effective. And then you've got backlash compensation. So this is where the backlash is taken out. So with the value at the top, it'll actually add in or take away that backlash amount. So I think it's 0.25 millimeters. And it'll add it in and take it away and then hand the control back. So if you change direction, the program will recognize that take out the backlash and then hand control back over to whatever program you're in. So with backlash compensation you've got natural play in the mechanical aspects of the drive unit and the lead screw as well. It's not a ball screw on this one, it's a lead screw. So where you move the table in a positive direction, the drive unit needs to take up the backlash first so it's actually pushing on the table and then as you reverse it the drive unit has to catch up with the mechanical backlash and then pull the table in the other direction. So as you can see, as you move the drive unit in the positive direction, it takes a little bit of time to catch up with the table and then move to the table. Then as you change direction, the drive system comes back in the other direction, but it's not moving the table until it catches up with its backlash and pushes it in the other direction. So there's backlash in both the lead screw and in the drive unit itself within the belts and pulleys. You can reduce it by using a ball screw, but I've just kept with the original lead screw from the machine. So you've got this backlash control. And this backlash can be a problem, especially with milling, because if you're cutting in a certain direction, you can actually pull the table against the other side of the backlash. So if you've got 0.25 mil of backlash, your cutting process can actually pull that by 0.25 of a mil, and then your accuracy is that much off. So it's important to understand backlash, take it out where necessary, and adjust it for how you're cutting the part. So that's where backlash compensation comes in. It recognizes a direction change, takes up the backlash, and then carries on with the program so that the 0.25 mil is taken into consideration. Uh, then you've got stop all overdrive motors. So, so you call all stop in your main program or another function, because you can call another function from within a function. Y axis soft stops, uh, encoder position, so all the way through the other functions there's encoder position. So instead of writing this program out 50 times throughout the main program, you just write it once and use it as a function and then call on that function so you don't have to write that too many times. So it saves space in your program. CNC display refresh, so that's the same as well. And the main one at the bottom is ISR E stop. So as soon as you press the emergency stop, it stops what it's doing wherever it is on the program and just tells the O drive to stop the motor and turn it off. And then as soon as you release the emergency stop button, it goes back to exactly where it was in the program. So that's your main program, your main sketch. So the next step is to see the program running and moving the machine and map it to where we are in the sketch. So that should power up the Arduino. Right, and let's give this a test. 
So I'll restart this so you can see there's a reset button there. It goes through version 1.6.3, tells you what the last changes were, and then goes on to this zero to calibrate or one for menu. So I'm going to calibrate it. Zero on there, ends up. It's super quiet. So then it goes into this menu system. So I've disabled number one, so that won't work uh, because it causes the drive to move in and out. And while I've got things attached to it, I don't want that happening. So I can jog it, so I can go into two and jog it. So that's the current position at the moment. And I can, it's the wrong direction, point one of a, so point one of a millimeter there. And that's the actual position from the encoder. So from this encoder, that's the actual position. So I can see exactly where it's at. So if I take that up to one, oops, there, I can step it by one millimeter, 10 millimeters. If I keep hitting that, so that's on 26, 36. Take that to 40. Uh, and then if I do one, two, three, should go to 10, which it does. Slight overshoot there, but not by much. And what you'll see, if I move it by 0.1 millimeter in either direction, so you'll probably notice that that jumps. So if I get the O drive there, If I move it round, it's only moving by that much, but if I jump in the other direction, it takes up the backlash first and then carries on going. Do that again the other way round. Probably see it better with this continental label. So I'll move that across there, reverse the other direction, and it jumps. Now that's 0.1 of a mil, and then it jumps again, 0.1 of a mil. So that's actually taking the backlash off. Like that. So anyway, I'll come out of jog mode. Put that back to 10. So I come out of jog mode. Number three, I've got move. So I can enter a new value, one to enter a value. I can put a minus sign there if I wanted to, negative or positive. So I'm gonna put a positive value uh, and I'm gonna choose 20 millimeters and then execute it. So that will now move to 20. And then I can move it again to five, oh, enter five, so that'll just go back. So I can move it to an absolute position. There you go. And if I go uh, CLC off, I can actually turn the O drive off. That will turn off closed loop control. I might as well do it. Off. So as you can hear, it's turned off the motor. Go back on that, and then I can recalibrate if I needed to. Let that calibrate. If I go into the end stop, which is number four, then I can set a position, so I can go, right, I want Y plus to be, say 15, oops, enter, 15. You can put a negative value in there as well. 
uh, and then two we'll say that's at one millimeter. You can actually put, do that again, 15.005 if you wanted to. I'm just going to put 15, enter. In fact, no, I'll, I'll put it as 15 point, enter 15 point. 155, there you go. Enter. See how accurate it is. Right, click on next. So I can set the speed of the positive direction and set the speed to the negative direction as well. So, positive direction I'm going to have 0.1 millimeters per second, and two I'm going to have as uh, 21 millimeters per second. So that's correct. Enter that. Right, then you've got a star to start. So there you go, that's 0.1 millimeters per second. Going to 15. But as you can hear, that's very, very quiet. If I turn the mill on. That's where the noise comes from. Eventually I'll convert the drive motor for the mill into uh, an O-drive and then that will be a lot quieter with belt drive as well. That's going to take some time. You can actually cut into the program at any time. It'll come out of there but it'll record all the settings again. So 15.155, let's speed that up. One, I'm going to put that as one mil now. Into that to start. It will go in the other direction first. And then press the button again and that's one millimetre a second. It's almost like manual CNC but it saves me a lot of time. And that will just keep going. At the moment there's a loop with I think a th count of 30 so this will do this 30 times and then uh, come out. But it will keep the settings in any case. So if I went back into it, uh, all the settings are there. So you've still got the joypad control. So if I turn that on, it comes up with a um, message on here. Press OK on that. That turns the joypad on, so you don't accidentally turn it on and this takes control and gets knocked and then the milling machine starts moving on its own, so you've got to confirm it on the screen now. You should be able to see the backlash being taken up. As I go backwards and forwards. If I speed that up. And there you have it. So what I'm doing at the moment is machining out some of the Y-axis components and you can see that that's um, using that CNC control. So you can see the lines up there and it's nice and accurate. And that took me a sixth of the time than manually machining it. Well that's it for this video. Please check out my other videos and thank you for watching.